So this chaotic looking pile of junk I'm actually trying to make into a quantum entanglement source and although the electronics looks kind of intimidating with lasers and dichroic mirrors and even a ethernet connection to the Arduino that's detecting the entangled photons, the polarization state of the photons using these little paddle polarization controllers with fiber optics mounted on them. The real, uh, if you like, workhorse of the quantum entanglement setup is this crystal called beta barium borate, which is a nonlinear optical crystal. And it has a special property that if you pump uh, a ultraviolet laser into the crystal, such as around 405 nanometers or 390 nanometers, the near ultraviolet, uh, it will actually generate spontaneously by a process called spontaneous parametric down conversion uh, two photons of uh, a down converted um, frequency or frequency doubled basically. Uh, or sorry, uh, wavelength, wavelength doubled or frequency halved, and this will generate, uh, in fact, entanglement via uh, well, potentially two two processes, either through uh, orbital angular momentum of the photons, basically the corkscrew like motion of the photons in space, or via their polarization state if they're vertically or horizontally polarized, and these can be given representations on the. Poincaré uh, sphere, which is a kind of a way in which you can, using kind of geometry, uh, map the different polarization states of light. Uh, but these correspond actually to entanglement. They're variables in which, if you affect the polarization of one, the ver vertical, say, it will mean that the uh, the opposite photon will automatically, um, if you like, be uh, measured or observed to be in the um, the a horizontal state. So it's a way in which you can influence uh, light uh, across uh, distances uh, without in fact having any local um, interactions with them. So it's a very interesting phenomenon. It's being explored. In this case I'm developing a system which could use uh, quantum entanglement for uh, sending so-called quantum keys but uh, ultimately my goal is to have this as being a single quantum node uh, with perhaps a different quantum node over here. Again, in a kind of a junkyard state at the moment, but hopefully we'll be working soon and have these systems connected to the internet via uh, Arduino uh, Wi-Fi module with the photo detectors being avalanche photodiodes uh, actually detecting the polarization state or, or and or the orbital angular momentum state of the light. So it's obviously a very tall order, but uh, the one interesting thing uh, I wish to prove with this setup is that you can actually do um, a procedure of synchronization, which is very close to classical synchronization, uh, but which gives certain special features of a quantum network if used on a quantum uh, network, uh, such as, uh, for instance, uh, re-establishing uh, so-called dead links in a network, uh, zero capacity channels, uh, re restoring them to full capacity or to at least partial capacity again using quantum entanglement. And uh, so, well, mathematically speaking, it's interesting that a lot of these uh, systems can be described uh, using a, a concept called phase space, uh, which is um, a, if you like, a mathematical landscape or topology, uh, which typically is used in um, the mathematics of chaos, uh, but also emergence uh, and uh, synchronization, network synchronization. And uh, the main reason I'm interested in this area of research is to see if there's commonality between uh, classical synchronization and uh, quantum synchronization, and if uh, any strange, uh, self similar um, fractal like patterns uh, can arise in these networks. And uh, for my area of study so far, it seems that they, they indeed do, that you can in fact see 
uh, self similar fractal like patterns in quantum networks, at least on simulations, uh, with uh, using um, so called uh, graph theory uh, to represent a quantum network as a, a directional acyclic uh, feed forward graph uh, with its own uh, time evolution. Uh, its own entropic uh, arrow of time, so to speak. Uh, and this is uh, what primarily drives me into this uh, research, but also um, it is something that's attracting quite a lot of attention. There is, uh, of course, a kind of a hype cycle with all technologies, but the quantum hype cycle uh, perhaps seems to have uh, passed uh, to a certain extent. Uh, a lot of promises obviously are being made about quantum computing, uh, but quantum networks, I think, is something which uh, still has uh, relatively a bit more purity uh, in terms of the uh, field of, of study. And um, from my point of view, uh, things like quantum key encryption and uh, this key distribution are all very well and good, but uh, the real thing that interests me is uh, creating so-called uh, self-healing networks, uh, by the which I, I describe uh, so-called dead networks being restored uh, using uh, the power of quantum entanglement, so-called uh, super activation. Uh, and so on. Uh, this is something that's kind of uh, not talked about very much in the context of quantum technologies, uh, usually focus more on quantum computing um, and the use of uh, stuff such as uh, quantum computing circuits, superconducting circuits, but this is using uh, room temperature, uh, nonlinear optics. And I do think um, uh, as time goes on, uh, more and more of this technology will be uh, be uh, explored and uh, perhaps even implemented uh, in the real world in um, applications such as quantum key distribution uh, and so on.